Okay, so this is Real Disciples Podcast 7. Um, I'm here with Pastor Brandon. Let's dive into this. And I wanted to just ask, like I do with everybody, how did you get saved? Um, well, Kaylin's mum got saved in yeah. this church. and That's, that's your what, son? That's my son, yeah. yeah. And that's what connected me with the church. Um, she tried to witness to me on multiple occasions, mm -hmm. um, but there was no... The, the relationship for inter we just wasn't there we couldn't we couldn't so you'd really heard speak. so the, the, you had heard that she had become a christian she told you she had become a christian yeah but and that didn't really mean anything it didn't to mean me nothing to because you okay i didn't understand what you would mean you know i yeah. was catholic okay to a degree i guess yeah yeah, yeah. Like, so like most catholics uh, yeah. non-practicing non-practicing anything yeah. yeah so when she when i heard she got saved she got saved there was just nothing really to that but she kept inviting me to the to the church um and I just wasn't interested, if I'm honest with you. I, I didn't understand why she kept speaking about this thing. And then um, there was a football tournament. It's, it's all crazy. There was a football tournament beforehand, um, before this actually happened, my inter when I first met you. Um, and I saw Kyle there. And we were playing football. And so oh, this is not the Potter's House football. This is another football tournament. It's something tournament. outside. Okay. Something yep. outside. And... You know, we were kind of tipsy. We won that football tournament. It was great. There's really good football players there. But I remember seeing Kyle and we were acting silly. But there was something that gravitated me to look towards him and the people that he was with. Mm. And even though we were being a bit silly, there was a calmness. And I remember just, I just remembered that. So, um, and then I think it was a, a little while after that, maybe a few weeks, uh, you guys were going to outreach. Um, and you came to drop uh, Kaylin with, with Joe and and you came into my mum's estate because I, I went to my mum's house that, that day. And you came downstairs. So I came downstairs um, and when I came downstairs, I remember feeling very apprehensive. I just thought, what is he trying to do, man? So I felt really apprehensive. So um, what happened was is um, a guy called Smalls, um, he saw you guys in Clapham Junction. Mm. And I believe you were handing out flyers. So he called me and he said, I saw the mother of your child, yeah, with this light skinned guy. Um, and he said, look, they were handing out flyers for this rave, right? <laughs> so, you know, I didn't know, it, you know, it was, it was crazy, it was and we just mad. need to, we just need to, we just need to <laughs> clarify something. <laughs> yes, yeah. I've never <laughs> I did not fly for a rave. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what. That's because it's a concert. Yeah. Amen. It wasn't even a concert. Really, it was a church. It was, it was just a church that, thing. Because this would be instant redirection. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what it was. So, yeah. so he so thought it was a rave. He yeah. thought it was a rave. So what he did was he got one of the flyers and he, he gave me the information. Mm. Yeah. And I came with uh, Roger Christian and uh, who was it? I can't remember the other guy. So there was. Mm. There was, there was Three of us. There was three of us. Me plus three guys. Mm. So we went there, and then Owen comes out, and I thought, this is weird because the building was massive, but there was there was hardly any people in it. <laughs> so it just looked it just really looked yeah, odd. Yeah, and then yeah. this African guy stands up and he starts singing, and um, it just sounded mad. The whole thing just it just seemed like what are they doing, you know? And then you came out afterwards. Mm. Um, I think it was Brother Roger to open in prayer, but you came out afterwards and then you started preaching. And when you started preaching, I just felt convicted. I felt so convicted. And I, I was the only person to answer the altar call that day. But even though I answered the altar call, I still had this apprehension towards you because I didn't, I couldn't understand why you came to my mom's house, mm. if that makes sense. Mm. So that's, that's how I got saved. But the Sunday I got saved, like, as you know, I got saved on Sunday, but I went to Iron Apple on Monday. Mm. That was a pre-booked holiday, so uh, <laughs> I didn't book it afterwards. So yeah, we'll God forgive saved. you. We'll forgive you. <laughs> but I remember when I was in uh, in Napa, I didn't um, I didn't fornicate, um, and something was different. Something something was different. So you've I, only been saved a day. One day. But you feel different. something's different. Different. By the end of the week, um, by the end of that week, I had stopped drinking. Mm. I had kind of, not like completely, I didn't say I'm not going to drink anymore, mm. but I just didn't want to drink anymore. Mm. So I remember while that, that Sunday, I remember Brother Owen announcing that there's going to be a conference. So I remember just making like a note of it somehow. And 
I came back the following week, but I worked every Sunday, so I couldn't take the time off. Um, and then a couple of weeks later, it was the conference. So, and I got there, Pastor Peter preached on a Monday, the worth of a soul. You know, as you know, one of the mm -hmm. sermons that mm -hmm. very key in my life. So that's really, that's, that's the start of my journey. So it's amazing, and uh, you know, I didn't notice till we had spoken about this today, that you got saved on the Sunday. And then on the Monday, you, you go on this holiday, which is like- A boy's holiday. Excuse me. This, you, you, you get saved on the Monday, so on the Sunday, and then you go on this holiday where it's basically like Sodom and Gomorrah. It's just a yeah. this sin capital. Yes. Uh, but something is already working in you. Something, because really no one knew, no one had any expectation of you to live a sanctified life. No. And so that really does testify to the work of uh, salvation. Yeah. That it, it's a work of God. That mm -hmm. if, 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 you, if you think that if you're saved, there should be something in you that's changed because mm. I, I think um, when I got saved, the night I got saved, I went home and somebody said, throw away, get rid of your music. Mm. No one told me that. And so I think that is kind of like a mark of genuine salvation when something changes. It's not that you become totally, I mm. mean, it's not like you, you, I'm not going, no. you know, but something in you has to change. Yeah. And all it, all it was is it was, I, I wouldn't even articulate it like it was a conviction because I didn't know what conviction was. But all I knew that while I was there, the thing that I was looking forward to doing just didn't seem appealing anymore. Your appetite know, had yeah. changed. Yeah, yeah that, it had Your changed. Your appetite was already starting to change. Yeah. Okay, so that's very good. So that would have been probably, we're saying the end of 2009. 2009, End yes. of 2009, you go to the conference, you come back. Um, I know that I, I remember you coming into the church you had a big afro <laughs> that's since gone yeah that's what i'm not wearing vo a hat. voluntary that's yeah. not that's just gone yeah, yeah. it's gone I a, 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 yeah <laughs> event and so um and i i remember you um uh, i remember speaking to owen i remember saying owen okay owen can you work with this guy mm. and i know owen was a big part of your discipleship yeah here is this guy that's meeting with you and he would be coming back to me, asking me questions and things like that. And I always remember you ringing me up about, you said, you've got this book called Maximize Manhood. Yeah. You, I know that's your, that's your go-to manual. Trust All me. All of your disciples have- Everybody has yeah, to have it. Has, has to have that. And so, and you'd read it and something about the femininity, the feminine man. He cut the hair off, yeah. came to church the next day, suited and booted or whenever you, whenever it was hair mm. off what in you when did would you say when did you see that that when did you get this thing when something clicked in you that i just want everything that god has for me um i think ultimately um it falls down to yourself and owen i would say um you know my my, bi my biological dad had passed away so i don't really know him my biological mm. dad but my stepdad was still around and he was very just very african the best way to describe him he was, and I just didn't really follow his principles because I thought they were for Africa. Mm. So there was a confusion because in the book, in the first chapter, it speaks about why men would grow their hair and why men would have earrings and stuff like that. And it, you know, it might not fit for certain people, but yeah. it communicated that you're trying to um, emulate what you believe beauty is or what you think handsome or what mm. it means to be handsome. Mm. But it's because because my mum was the the most integral parent in my life. I was trying to emulate beauty in what I've seen in her. Mm. So when I saw you and Owen, these were men. You you were just men, men. And when I it's really the way that you guys carried yourself and the way that you guys would speak. I said there's something about that that I want. So and you know I kind of just submitted myself under Owen. And it was, it was really just watching his life and the things that he would do. And it was a dominion over his life. And I didn't know what it was, but I just knew there was something different about him. So um, when you, you, rec you recommended that book for a men's discipleship class. That's right, yes, yes, And you yes. asked, uh, I think you asked the leaders to buy that book. But I remember thinking, well, I'm not a leader, but I'll, I'll buy the book. So I remember buying the book and reading it, just feeling this conviction. So, you know, 
from that day. I remember, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I remember uh, if you watch, and it's online, you could watch one of our old end of year videos and it's you and Anthony standing upstairs yeah. and you saying it, next year I want to be the new Owen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, it's selling that. Okay, good, good, good. So, okay, so, you, um, so saved, faithful, disciple, coming to church, um you took over praise and worship um doing other stuff uh connect group leader at the time bible study whatever it was when did you well even before that when it when did you feel i want to be a pastor i'm called to be a pastor the monday of a uh, conference my first conference so basically a few weeks after your salvation a few weeks after my salvation um it wasn't so much about I didn't know what it mean to be a pastor. I don't know if I wanted to be a pastor, but mm. I knew that uh, I had a calling from God mm. that he wants me to preach the gospel, whatever okay. that looked like. Yeah. So it was when I heard that sermon by Pastor Peter, the worth of a soul, that's when I knew you, I gotta go and do this. And in fact, that week, that's when I witnessed to my brother, he came to the church and so and many other things. So you, you hear this sermon and in you now, it's like, I just don't wanna be a pew warmer. Yeah. I've gotta preach the gospel. I yeah. gotta be on the cutting edge. Yeah. And then, you're submitting your life. So, and, and and obviously this podcast is called Real Disciple. Yeah. Be one, make one. Yeah. And so um, here you are now, a pastor, discipling other men, mm. ministry experience. But where would you have been without a man discipling you? Where would you be without Owen discipling you? I think I would barely be saved. I think I'd barely be saved. I'll probably be chasing money, trying to, you know, get a bigger house, get a faster car, you know, that would be my appetite, mm. you know, um, because Owen, Owen never had much. He didn't have much, but what he did had, I wanted, I wanted it. And it wasn't so much, I wasn't attracted to When you Owen. think about it, so when you think about it, because obviously only the originals are going to know Brother Owen. Obviously yeah. he passed away uh, yeah. tragically, but you know, he's going to be, with the, the Lord, Lord, he's yeah. run his race, he's finished his race. Yeah. Finished his race. And he um, ran it well. Definitely. Um, but here is this guy who is not trendy. No. <laughs> I mean, he's not fashionable. He no. wasn't, you know, but he was a man's man. Yeah. Definitely that. He wasn't a softy or, you know, limp type of dude. Yeah. He was a real man's man. But um, so many guys that have come out from this London trendy culture still wanted to be like him. Mm. They were attracted to him. Yeah. Um, so the other thing I want to speak about, and then we're going to talk more about the calling, but here is this man that can correct you yeah. and rebuke you. Did he ever rebuke you? Yeah, he did a lot. Yeah. yeah. And, and so do you remember any of his rebukes that you can... Any that you can remember? Yes, yes. The one that stands out to me is the first time I was allowed to do a Bible study. Mm. And um, I believe it was uh, Sister Marilyn's birthday. And they were going to be going to Croydon to have some food. It was J It's not JRC. It was one of those all-you-can-eat buffet mm. places. Mm. So I wanted to wrap up the Bible study quick, you know. So I, I literally said, do you get it? Do you understand? Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's move on. The appetite was, yeah. was, was pushing the schedule. Yeah. So um, I remember him <laughs> standing up and, it, you know, the way he's, he's, he's famous. No, bro, you don't do that, bro. <laughs> you know, that's the, that was his thing. And, you know, he was like, you want to go do this, but God, but nevertheless, you know, and he just started to rebuke me openly in front of everybody, <laughs> you know, and um, yeah. In <laughs> In front of everyone at the in Bible In front of study. the whole Bible study. Yeah, because he knew I was trying to rush it. He knew I was trying to rush it. Oh, and yeah, he guy. rebuked me. He just, you, didn't, you don't understand. You've been given a great privilege here to be able to minister the gospel. Mm. And you're making it light because you want to do what? Eat chicken. You know, so. And I remember Sister Julie laughing at me as well. You know, so it was really, it was, yeah. He it was a humbling me. experience. Oh, but yeah. But a good experience. Oh, yeah, yeah, a, yeah. a character building. I think yes. that's one of the things that guys will lose. If you don't have men in your life mm. that can speak to you, yeah. you're you, you're going to lose opportunities of character building. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Because now we look at that and we laugh, and you you almost cherish it. Oh yeah, like, definitely. Ah, oh, yeah, I remember this. Yeah. And if you have, if you don't have those experiences, what are you gonna point to? 
that you you know there is because the key thing of one of the key things of being a disciple is being teachable yeah and if you're if you're not teachable you're unteachable then uh really and truly discipleship becomes non-existent and at best just a long process for you and for the discipler it's mm. just like uh, yeah but i'll be honest with you when he used to rebuke me i never saw it as rebuke which was interesting i always saw it as a challenge because everything you, like, let me cut you there do you think that is because you come from an african background and you was used to being uh disciplined in a certain way or do you think no i i got saved and i wanted what these guys had well i think it's a mixture okay i think it can't go because my culture is always to be respectful to older people yeah um so th i always try to be respectful yeah but at the same time i was never corrected in that way okay I was, you know, I was smacked, <laughs> but I wasn't mm. corrected. My mum, yeah. the culture wasn't, you don't get explained to, as to why you're being disciplined. You're yeah. just told, don't do that. Yeah. You know, and you have to stop. If you don't stop, then you get disciplined. Mm. So the, he had a, he had something. Mm. And th this way I can describe it is he reflected Christ mm. because there was something that, the thing that attracted me to Owen was there was something supernatural mm. about his life. That's the thing. And I wanted that. I wanted that supernatural element. Um, so that's the other thing that is when you're, you're trying to just could it, you know, when people are trying to disciple people that don't want what they have yeah. yet, they haven't bought into the person yet. They don't want what the person has. Yeah. And that, and you can't disciple someone unless, you know, I always say that, you know, unless you've got what I want from a perspective, from a perspective of uh, spirituality or, biblical maturity then it's going to be hard to learn from you because you, oh, yeah, you, you've got, i've got to want something that you have there oh, has yeah, to definitely. be that element there yeah definitely so he he was the thing about um owen he would chat i remember one time they he used to work as a customer service assistant at one of the front desks and they came to him and they asked him um we're gonna have to change the rotor a little bit because you might have to work a, maybe one sunday a month mm. And then he quit his job that day. Mm. And I remember when he quit his job that day, he came to where I was working at the bath store. Mm. He said, I had a bit, pardon me, he had a bit of time. So he came mm. and spoke to me. Then he mm. told me the story. Mm. And just that alone, because I used to work um, Sundays, I would kind of sneak out for lunch and then come to church mm. and then come back, go mm. back to work. Mm. I remember calling my regional manager that day and I said to him, listen, I need Sundays off. And if you're not going to give me Sundays, I'm going to quit. You know, and it's just little things like that. I would mm. see his life. He put such a massive emphasis on the kingdom of God. Mm. And and I, I, I derived that to this is why he has this supernatural element because he gives everything to God. So, so yeah. yeah, extreme faithfulness yes. to the kingdom of God. He did, you know, I remember we had an outreach. Still, for, I, I still remember it now. Just we were behind... Um, uh, what do you call it? The Halfords near mm. the Range Rover place, just around the back there, was gonna leaflet all those blocks. It was probably I don't know Friday night, Thursday night, and we just met up, prayed, mm. divvied out the flyers. We're gonna go put them in the doors, and Owen come said, "Pastor, I'm sorry I'm late." Mm. I was like, "Cool, no problem." And so we we divvy out the flyers, and then we just say um, a prayer, God go with us. So everyone's walking off. So I'm like, "Hey, how's things?" And he's like, um, "Pastor, I just want to let you know my dad passed away." today mm. i was like well, why, why is he here yeah i said bro man you, you're sorry you know you don't need to be here he said no no no, no let's be and that mm. that stuck in my mind that was always that stuck in my mind when yeah. many people you know not just not coming to outreach you don't want to come church yeah you lose your mind yeah. And I'm not judging anybody's level of mourning and grief because yeah. people are different. Yeah. But what I would say is th the guy did have something. Yeah. That he just, he knew that Christ was his rock and he projected that. And then you attract men to your life. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what culture you're from. Yeah. You don't have to be trendy. You don't have yeah. to look like this. You don't have to do that. It's Christ. Yes. You will attract men to your life. A hundred percent. Good, good. Okay. That was good. Owen, we love him, man. Um, so when did you uh, get sent out? 
Um, Remember? 2014. 2014. So. But I didn't actually go um, officially start till 2000. So I got set, sent out to 2014 conference. Yeah. And we started a church in March 2015, I believe it was. Okay. Yeah. And so, and you went, obviously you went to Fulham. How long was you in Fulham for? Three and a half years. Three and a half years. Yeah. Wow. Three Feels like shorter. Yeah, it feels shorter. But 2000, because technically we went, so after the conference, two months later, we kind of went and started a Bible study straight away. Yeah. Um, but officially the church, we were probably there for three years, officially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Officially yeah, yeah. three years. Okay, yeah. good, good. And so what would you say is the key thing you learned while you was out? Obviously there's many, many things, but what's the first thing that comes to your mind that really changed you when you went out? People, people, loving people. Mm. That's what I. That's what changed me because we, you know, I I'd done follow up in the church, but it was very much pro like a project, mm. and there was there was a certain, I don't know how to describe it. It's it's, it's weird, but because when you go on pioneer, you there's n there's no agenda. The agenda is that they get saved. Mm. You know, when I was doing follow up in in the body, I I, I kind of felt like I did this because this is what I was told to do. Yeah, you're doing it for the church I'm or doing you're doing it for, it for the, the pastor. But I weren't doing it for, and then when I saw uh, genuine conversion, seeing mm. someone change it, you know, because when you, when, you, when you experience that change, you just think that's unique to you. Mm. But when I saw that change in some other people, just by loving them and investing in them, um, it changed my, the way I see people. That's the main thing. I think I learned how to love people mm. while I was there because you have the weird and wonderful, you know, that come to the church. Mm. And even just the experiences I had with the physical violence that I experienced mm. with some of the disciples that were coming to the church. Um, but even to the point, I, I don't care if they we've had a fight. I don't care if we've we've had this altercation. You're going to get saved. You're going to Just to clarify, they know. were fighting you. <laughs> yeah, they were fighting me. Yes. <laughs> you know, so I think while I was there, I learned how to love people. Amen. You know, that's the main thing I would say from pioneering, learning how to love people and investing in people. They're not projects. They are, they are precious to God, Amen. you know. So that's what I really learned, pioneering. Very good, very good. So then uh, you've been back a year now. Yes. Back into the body. You came back in to assist me, yeah. which we obviously we appreciate that. And um, one of the things that's going really well at the moment is another level. Mm. And so another level... Um, obviously is uh, we would say it's a kind of a young adults ministry yeah. for new believers yes and so um what's the age what would you say your, your age a target uh i would say early 20s okay um, it varies from 17 i would say there's only one 17 year old but yeah. it probably varies from about 19 yeah. to 30 okay I would say. okay so, so, yeah. so all right so you're going right up there and so you're doing these debates yeah which has been very good You've done one on, what have you been doing them on? So the most recent one we did was uh, called Sooner Rather Than Later. Mm. And it really was just a metaphor or an analogy. Mm. Uh, we use a social issue that mm. a lot of people are thinking about mm. to ultimately communicate a biblical principle. Mm. So within the debate, yes, we were talking about relationships. We had Pastor Nathan and Pastor Aaron who got married mm. at the age of 19. Yeah. So the whole draw of it is because these guys are young, they speak about getting married as something in the future when they're 30 and so on and so yeah, forth. Yeah, yeah. But um, so the goal was to open up the discussion as why did these guys get married so young? Mm. But ultimately, so they, they t to point these guys down a certain road. So some people were asking question, how can I get married at 19? How can I get married now? I'm 22, 23. How can I get married now? Why would they say that? What, what is the thing that's, why do they think they couldn't like in their head? There's a few What's reasons. What's the cultural narrative that they're buying into that says they can't? Most of them are not coming from uh, married homes. Okay. Um, and for those who have come from married homes, have not seen really a successful marriage. Okay. So I think that's where... What's the alternative to them? I've got to what? I've got to live my life. I've got to figure yes. things out. I've got to get my career, my education, my money. Career, education, okay. all of these things yeah. were the key things for them to, to say that they'll be ready to get married. Mm. But the beauty of what was being communicated is we were able to paint the picture of Christ. How do I, ever, at 19, how do I know this is the right person? Mm. Well, what we're, what we're trying to communicate is purity mm. and Christianity. Mm. 
So firstly, the Bible says that um, that a husband should love his wife as Jesus loved the church, mm. right? So you have to, it, as they're asking these questions, we're communicating to them that you need to know who Christ is mm. in order for you to know how to find yeah. a husband. Because, Christ first, yes, and then we, we yes. emulate that. That's right, because ultimately you're looking for Christ in your partner. That's mm. what you're looking for. Mm. So you can't look for something you don't actually recognize. Mm. So before you start thinking about dating, relationship, husband, wife, mm. you need to think. You need to be thinking, right, who is Christ? What is his personality? What was he about? Can I see this in this man? Can I see this in this woman? And then the next thing is ultimately purity. You know, if you want to have the blessing of God, he who finds a wife finds favor from God. It, it comes from a place of purity. So, mm, mm. so as we're discussing this, this is becoming more clear because a lot of people, you know, I learned so many things uh, in that debate as well. There's something new. For me, you are either a link or you're as a wifey. That's that's how, what I grew up with. Mm. These guys have got multiple stages. They've got, they said they've got, they've got one called a situationship. I don't even know what that was. It's like situation. A situation ship. So you can't, the way they described it is you're almost my girl or my boyfriend, but I'm trying to let you know that I'm feeling you, that I don't really want you to check for anybody else, but you're not my girl. And like it's this. just, so you come from, oh, we're talking. So, and I don't know, you know, when you're talking, we're not talking about, you know, we're talking. Do you get what I mean? There's so many different stages Thank to, God to the I'm relationship. I'm saved and I'm married <laughs> because I'd be lost. Uh, I, was, I, I was lost. I'd need a chart. Are yeah. we, is this a situation? Is this a talking? Oh, is this, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. So um, how many people did you have out of this? Um, that one, I think it was just under 80 people turned up. Excellent. For that. Yeah. Excellent. And people prayed at the end. How many people yeah, prayed? Yeah, seven people answered the oracle. Wonderful. Yeah, seven. That's great. And that so I could see. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. And so, um, and the one you did before that, what was that one again? Did, uh, did you oh, the no, gray you area. Gray area. That was the gray area. And so that one was well attended and you got one coming up. This will go out yeah. after you've done it. Yeah, so, so the next one we're doing. It's about music, is it? Yeah, face, face the, the music. music. Face the music. So, um, you know, music predates creation. Mm. You know, when, we, when I say creation, I'm speaking about mankind. Mm. And people don't understand how powerful music is and how it can change your life. People don't realize that music is there. It's ministry. Spiritual. It is very spiritual. spiritual. Yeah. And ultimately, music ministers. That's mm. what it does. It ministers. Mm. So this is why when people are, um, you know, in a bad relationship, girls, after they break up with someone, they go and listen to slow jams because mm. it ministers to them. It gives them, <laughs> it gives them something. Do you know what I mean? But ultimately, <laughs> it makes them more depressed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The wrong type of ministry. Yes, yes. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but that's what it is. Yeah, solace. Yeah, definitely. It's like Saul, isn't it? Remember when yeah. he'd get in a rage and then David would play. Yeah, and it, it would come. come and the evil spirit would leave. Yeah. You know, so that's what, people don't realize this. And, you know, for example, one of the things that uh, one of the MPs was saying is the reason why there's, there's an increase in this knife crime mm. is because of this drill music. You know, it's very aggressive. It's mm. very, you know, even the beats, it's, it's just not, people think music is for entertainment. And we are, I understand to a certain degree, you don't mm. want to stretch it too far, mm. but music is worship. Mm. But whether you're worshiping God or you're worshiping something else, it's yeah, worship. Yeah, I see that. Um yeah, obviously you always got to be careful how far you go with that. But yeah. uh, the night I got saved, God told me throw away all my music. Yeah. The night I got saved, and that's way back when the dinosaurs <laughs> walked the earth. We had these things called CDs. No, they were cassette tapes. They, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Honestly, I had CDs. I had progressed. Okay, I, I did have some cassettes, but so I had over a hundred CDs. My days. And. Um, and yeah, God just said, you know, get rid of this music. And I really look back to that and think, if I didn't get rid of that music, I think that thing would have held me back. It definitely would have held me back because it it really was a, a stronghold mm. on me. It would, it, it, you know, if I listened to music and it was aggressive and, it, you know, Wu-Tang Clan, it's like, yeah, I want to go fight someone. If you, mm. It just really is, there's definitely a, a, a spiritual dimension attached to it. And if you can't, if you can't make that sacrifice, that yeah. detachment, if you're still connected mm. to that. And I, I'm not, 
you know, I, I, I'm not going to go into it like the beat is violent or this is violent. Yeah. I'm, uh, my persuasion the is words. it's always the words. Yes, the words, yeah. Because, you know, when you think you're a kid, you learn A, B, C, D. Mm. It's the melody that makes that thing stick in your head. I was with yeah. a brother the other day and we were talking and we were joking and he said something and I said, I never sleep because sleep is the cousin of death. And that's a Nas album. And <laughs> my it's still days. in my head. Now yeah. you think about this now. Um, that's over 20 years old. Yeah, music and stays with it's, you. If not more, maybe. Yeah, well, it's worth about 25 years old. Wow. And that's been embedded in me. You ask someone, what did the pastor preach yesterday? They don't Can't know. Remember. You ask them, what, me what memory verse do you have? They have no memory verses. Nothing. And so there's definitely uh, a serious dimension to this. So, yeah. We believe in God that's going to be even w more well attended. Yes. And more people get saved. It's good. Yes, amen. Very good. Yeah. And so um, I just wanted to, uh, we had a discussion yesterday in our leaders um, Bible workout. And it was this was, this was from Romans 1 verse 16, where he speaks about, I'm not ashamed of the gospel yes. of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. Uh, he says, for the, the Jew first, also for the Greek, for in it is the righteousness of God yeah. is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Yeah. And we were talking about this, that the gospel is the real thing that saves people. Yes. And, and so that's what we're always trying to articulate. Yes. The gospel. Yes. And when I when we we kind of we were touching upon it because so many times we're trying to you know you're trying to get people saved mm. and I said you got to be careful that when you're trying to get people saved it's it's coercion mm. it's persuasion it's yeah it, it's it's a different thing it shouldn't be that than what you've had yeah. because you got the gospel and something transacted in you yeah and then the next day you go away and there's still something working in you. Yeah. It wasn't me or Owen. No. That we could only work with you because you first got saved. Yes. And so one of the things we were saying about um the importance of getting the gospel into everything. Yes. That you 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 this message of Jesus coming and dying for us. And now that he's died for us, we have hope. Yes. That we're sinners and we got to have this in what what when you when you hear that what comes to your mind i think i would reverse engineer that so the way that what comes to my mind is i don't try to get i don't try to get jesus in it yeah i think for me i it starts with jesus mm. and then you build everything else around it yeah because um something you told me um when i first went out because i was trying i had all these crazy ideas mm. and you said to me, um, ideas don't get people saved. It's the gospel, mm. you know, and it, mm. the gospel is, is enough. The gospel mm. is enough. Mm. And I think when you go out, you, you have this daunting thought in your mind. Okay, you start to think that what got you saved doesn't work anymore. Very good. Do you get what I mean? But mm. um, so when I think about that, it's the gospel is enough. The Bible says, taste to see that the Lord is good. Mm. When someone gets the word of God and they, they get it and they understand what's been communicated. It's mm. clear mm. what Jesus has done for them and who they really are in mm. comparison to God. Mm. That's that that's that point where people make a choice. Mm. Do you get what I mean? And I mm. think for me, that's what you, if you can get people to that, make the gospel simple that they can understand it. Because once someone understands the gospel, the whole concept of people like, uh, not the concept, but people like William Tyndale, um, I'm going to translate this thing yeah. so people can understand it. Yeah. And when people understand it, he believed that once people got the gospel, their lives could change. So that's what I think when, when we read, I'm not, a, I'm not ashamed of it. And I think that like what you're saying is communicating it simply. Yes. I think that's another thing that we've got to, because what we discussed yesterday, when I was asking the guys, what is the gospel? They was like, well, you know, the, the, what is it? It's the message that, we're sinners. Yes. Jesus came yes. and he died for us and yes. now he's resurrected. That is the message of the gospel. Yes. And so um, so if you're preaching on money, yes. and they'd be like, Yeah, look, you know what? You're crazy with money, you're whack with money, you're dis yes. you're you're undisciplined, you're in debt, you're yes. an idolatrous, but yes. because Jesus came, 
and Jesus died, resurrected, there's hope for you. Amen. Uh, you know, whether you're preaching on lust, yes. why are you a pervert? Yeah. Why are you looking at pornography? Why are you cheating? Da, 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 da. But because Jesus died, yes. resurrected, there's hope for you. Yes. And that is what the, we want to make sure that everything we do, there's the gospel in it. Because otherwise it's just self-help. Yes. And it, it, that has a limited power because it's not self-help that changed us. Yes, no, it's not. It's th that's just modern counseling, you know, a new yeah. way of counseling. But that doesn't change. Yeah, modern that counseling. That doesn't change you. Um, it's the gospel that changes you. It's that revelation. Yes. Getting and, 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 and so th this is why if we get the, go all we got to do is get the gospel out. If we yes. tell them, Paul is like, I'm not ashamed of it because this thing is powerful. Yes. If you get this thing out, you don't save people. Just get this message out to them. If you can get them anyway, if you can get them sitting in a, a room debating mm. yes. and we're going to then give them the gospel. If we get them in a room and we do concert, then we give them the gospel. If yes. we can get them to church and we're going to preach on series and then we give, and if we get them the gospel, we believe God will save people. Yes. He, he will redeem them. It's that m supernatural thing. It, you, you don't have to have all the... No. All these things together, it's, it's, it's getting that to them. And, and the other thing that we kind of talked about, and I'll let you comment on this before we close, is that the gospel is the thing that keeps you saved. It yes. keeps you, it helps you, because after a while, you're doing everything right. You're coming to church, you don't miss services, you're in ministry, you tithe, you mm. pray, you read, um, and you can start to think like, oh yeah, I've got this now. Mm. And then you your flesh manifest you realize who you really are whether it's a feeling or a thought or something because your self-confidence you're almost like peter it says no i'll never deny you yes and it's at that point that if you're legalistic if you don't understand why you're saved how you're saved it's at that point where you find it very discouraging i see people you know they're on fire for one moment and then they made a little f falter yeah and then they kind of just ah oh, it's not it's not What's the point anymore? There's no hope for me now. Because yeah. I, I, like you needed a perfect, you needed to get a 10, a 9.5, this 10. But you've got to realize that, no, 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 no. The same gospel that saved you, mm. even though the way you are now, is the same gospel that keeps you safe. Yes, it is. Because Jesus came and he died and he rose again. And so there's hope for you. Yes. And that's what's going to keep you going. Mm. I think... The more I'm saved, the more I realize how mad I am. I'm mad, you know. And amen. I'll, I'll, I'll say amen to <laughs> So when I, you, you read your word, marriage also exposes certain things mm. as well. Um, you realize, man, I'm jacked up. And the more, the more, the best way I can describe it is the word of God is a mirror. Mm -hmm. Firstly, it shows you who you are mm -hmm. and it shows you who Christ is. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that gets me. So every single time I, I look at that, I always, the word of God is able to keep me because every single, it's like an onion. It's, mm. constantly, it's constantly been peeling back. Mm. You know, you think you've dealt with that anger and then you're, you're behind the wheel and you're, you're just getting angry and then you're, oh my days, I need to, you know. So for me, that's what it is. It's constantly being revealed to you Very who good. you really are. And ultimately it's having the right mind and heart to constantly respond to conviction. Because I think that's the thing that gets people over time. You, you get to a place where I'm t like you said, you're tithing, you're doing all the things that you believe a Christian is supposed to do. Mm. But can God still challenge you? Can God still say to you, why? I want you to drop everything, you know, and I want you to go and mm. I want you to go and preach the gospel over here. Mm. Or can I, can, I, can I tell you to empty your bank? Mm. You know, yes, you've emptied your bank before. Praise God. But can I tell you to do it again? So these are the things and it keeps you on. The, but it's great. It's the, and, and the one thing I would say is that it is great when God can still do that it keeps it fresh mm. when you respond to conviction so i think yeah god can keep you god will keep you as long as you're you stay you know you, you just remember who you really are amen, amen. and so um how long have you been married uh seven years in march seven years yeah, in march yeah amen and how many kids do you have i've got three boys ages uh five ten and ten five ten and ten yes and so busy household very busy busy household very good very very busy very good amen <laughs> so we're going to leave it there brandon Fantastic. thank you cool. for coming on it appreciate it me. and we'll, well we've got to get you back man we're going to mm. believe god for 
another level to go to another level. Yes. And then we'll have you back on. Amen. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right.